It's Saturday and I'm in love. The Temple Owls have won four of five back at the Old York Ice Rink here in Sheltonham Township, PA. I am Taylor Snyder on the call, joined by Michael Zingroni. Hockey is underway, full force. Cornell has the puck. Mike, who are your starting five tonight for the Owls? Who to look out for? Who to look out for? I'm going Charles Gowser right away. He had that game winner against Navy yesterday in overtime, so I'm excited to see his jump. He might be a little extra motivated, a little extra confidence after that overtime winner. So especially with him shifting the defense, I'm looking forward to jump into the play as he's been playing forward the whole year, so he might be a little aggressive. Sean McDowell, number 38 on the ice for the Owls. Charles Giazza starting. Andrew Kayser out there as well. Brendan on Dick. Who else? The usuals. An unusual suspect in net tonight for the Owls. Matt Shelley, number 30, in between the pipes. Out of conference game for the Owls. And they will control early on. Chasing the puck is McDowell, knocked down. And now Cornell behind their own cage will handle. Looks to push it into the neutral zone. They will. Moving up the right wing. Tries to put a move on. And it was Max Hucker there on the call. Shelley with a nice save off the blocker. Garrett Elmer there to clean up the act. And now Cornell looking to push it back. Temple says otherwise. And Max Hucker will move up through the neutral zone. Number 77 on the ice. Sean Fowler was involved last week when this team took on Towson. 1-0 victory in overtime. Brendan Ondick with the game winner. Moving the puck now is Cornell looking to forecheck, keep it in their zone. Garrett Elmer was there to pop it out. And now back in to the big red zone and into the neutral zone once again. Almost two minutes surpassed thus far in this game, one shot for the away team, zero for the Cherry and White. Yeah, I was, I was really enticed to see how these first few minutes will go. It's kind of almost as expected. I didn't expect Temple to maybe come out with the biggest boost of energy because I'm sure they used a lot of it last night in a big game against Navy. So it's a bit back and forth, kind of the teams feeling each other out. But we're ready to see which team's going to get their legs under them first. Garrett Elmer at the dot for Temple. Loses the draw, Cornell controls. John Fowler still on the ice. Jason Ferguson, crowd favorite, is out there. And Shelley with a nice save to the breadbasket. Good save. Nice, easy save. You want to get him, you want to get your goalie into the game as soon as possible, but you don't want to let him get peppered with, say, like 10 shots in the first five minutes. But easy breadbasket save. Let's get him into this game. Big thing I'm looking for in this game, Mike, is how does Shelley respond to the traffic in front of the net? The Owls have to do a good job of making him see that puck. And now Cornell looking to handle. Jack Pierce is out there to dump it out. And on the chase is Austin Maurer. Maurer now back to Ian Bowles. Bowles to Tom Zimbricki. Zimbricki tried to find Jack Pierce, could not do that. So Zimbricki will go back behind the cage. Took a shot after the play. Cornell tries to send it to the front on the redirect, and the referee blows the whistle. Yeah, I like that point on see how Shelley will handle the... The pressure in front of the net, the bodies in front of the net, because while Ben Auerbach has been playing very well in these last few games for Temple, the defense in front of him has been just as spectacular. While, granted, Navy got near 50 shots yesterday, it didn't seem like they had the insanely dangerous high-scoring opportunity, so I'm, I'm kind of compelled to see how the defense will play in front of Shelley. Trying to keep that shot count low, very important for mm -hmm. a guy like Shelley who has not seen as much burn as Auerbach, but let's not forget there was a four-game stretch about two months ago where Shelley saw significant time, so... This is a good opportunity for him to get some good burn in there, Mike, with our back on the bench. Yeah, it's, it's good that time he got in earlier the season, so it's not like he's coming in now, sort of, you don't know what you have, you know, it's only maybe, you know, first few games, but he's played a good amount, so he's got some experience under his belt. Ian Bowles now on the chase, looking to get it out. Cornell playing aggressive hockey right now. A sense of the front, could not reach, and into the glove of Shelley. Got to get the puck out of the defensive zone, you know. Sooner or later, it's, it's going to hurt you. The shots are already 4-0, not in your favor if you're Temple. So, got to get out, got to get moving. Just go north to south, get the puck out. Speaking of lineup changes tonight, number five, Charles Giazza on defense for the Owls. Not at his usual position. Off the blocker, Shelley almost made it to the back. And now through the neutral zone is Brendan Ondick, who could not control it. So, Cornell will bring it back to this side of town. Cornell, another shot to the front and a glove saved by Matt Shelley. Cornell with seven shots already. So that's a high total, but, but Shelley's looking good so far. So it's, it's not too worrisome as of yet. But, you know, sooner rather than later, it could get bad. A unique circumstance, 45-24, to 24, the final score between North Carolina State and Virginia Tech in basketball. North Carolina State only 24 points today. 
Don't know if you had the chance to peep that, Mike. A little off-ice action, so... Uh, it is a bit unusual, seven shots to zero. As you mentioned, the Owls have to do a better job of forechecking, keeping it in their own zone. Charles Giazza now against the boards, puts it to Brendan Ondick. Brendan Ondick tried to clear it out, could not do that. So Charles Giazza now, and on the chase is McDowell. McDowell moving up ice, looking for a window. Cox back, holds, tries to pass it to Kaiser, could not do that. So Cornell, once again, will dump it back. Kyle Smedley out there now for the Owls. The white cage, number 15, behind the net, handling the puck. Tried to push it back to Giazza, but it was sent up in front by Cornell. Cornell shot to the front and blocked down by Andrew Kayser. Andrew Kayser, number 12 out there, had a goal and an assist two weeks ago versus Penn State Burks in this building. Andrew Kayser now moving up the left wing. Tries to send it around town, SpongeBob style. Could not do that, so Cornell will control. And Cornell dumps it back in to the cherry and white zone. And retrieving the puck will be number 18, Max Hucker. Hucker now to Giazza. And Giazza once again playing keep away, it seems, early on in this game. Mike Giazza seems his full-time job has just been to dump it into the neutral zone. Yeah, well, they, they need some neutral zone. So get the puck out into the neutral zone, get some work in there because they've been spending way too much time in their own end. Garrett Elmer now with the pass to Sean Fowler. Tries to move up the left. Cornell had it played nicely. Looking for Hucker. Finds him. Hucker can't make much of it. So now Cornell again moving through the neutral zone. Sean Fowler now retrieves the puck. Sean Fowler moving up the left side. Makes a nice move on it. Tries to go backhand. A shot that went just wide of the net. In net tonight for the Cornell Big Red, Tegan Keel, Mike. An interesting name, number 37. What do you think of Mr. Keel? Four and six on the season thus far. Has only faced one shot in this game. Well, I, I want to see a little bit more of him before I formulate an opinion, but they got to start getting some shots on him. And to the queue with a nice blocker save. So he looks pretty solid so far, but you got to get more than two shots in five minutes if you want to get one by him, any goalie for that matter. First shot on goal counted for the Owls, second in general, and now an icing call. Jason Ferguson was back there, number 93. Wow, NC State, 24 points. That's interesting. Right there, yeah, yeah number 12, yeah. Virginia Tech, taking on number 23, you NC brought State. That up to me. That, that, that's, that's very interesting. I kind of can't, can't get over that. Had it up on my phone there. Out of league play, or excuse me, out of sport play. The Temple Owls taking on Tulane in New Orleans today. But we are here on the ice. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. I am Taylor Snyder, joined by Michael Zingroni on the color. Ian Bowles now behind the net, looking to make something of it. Jack Pierce says, I'll take it from here. And now Tom Zimbricki's going to have to get involved again. Zimbricki's been playing some tough minutes out there. Took a couple of hard checks early on. Behind the net now is Bowles. And Zimbricki once again, play is blown dead. Think we have a penalty on Temple here. We could. And it's Jack Pierce going to the box. So Richie's penalty kill the first of the game with 13.48 remaining in the first period. A two-minute penalty. Appeared to be cross-checking, Mike. Yeah, this is going to be a big kill early on. Cornell already has seven shots in the first. Was that six minutes? So this power play could get ugly where they can just be peppering shots and one could eventually find the back of the net. So got to clear the puck early and often on this penalty kill. Advantage the upstate New York Travelers. Cornell now on five on four hockey. Looking to capitalize number 30, Matt Shelley in the goal for the Owls right to the bread basket, speaking of. And so the puck will move to the right dot. Shelley's looked very solid so far. I, I, I like how he's looking so far. He's in position. Uh, basically for every single shot, and he's flashed a pad a, a few times, so he's looking really good. That's a good sign early on. I think Andrew Kayser got an early jump, so now Charles Giazza will take it from here. Giazza now trying to win the faceoff. Cornell had it. Sent back to the right wing, back to the left, to the breadbasket of Matt Shelley. Another nice save by number 30. 143 remaining on the power play. That put Jack Pierce in the box, cross-checking two minutes. So that's about nine Cornell shots so far and about four of them going into the breadbasket of Shelley. That's a sign of good positioning as a goaltender. Cornell trying to keep it in their zone. It was fumbled by number eight, Ryan McDonald. And now moving up the left wing is number 19, Dong Yun Shin. Shin tried to send it back to McDonald. McDonald couldn't handle So now it's Brendan Ondick moving up the left wing, shorthanded. Tries to center it, keeps it himself. The Owl sent it to the front and it went just wide right of the net. Cornell now controlling the puck once again. Ten shots to two favoring the Big Red. 
Three shots in total for Temple. Only two have reached the net. Charles Giazza moving up the right wing. Tried to lay the blow down. Was Ryan McDonald number eight for the Cornell Big Red, but he'll skate back to the bench. Fresh legs on for the upstate New York Travelers. And now moving up the right wing. Cornell in transition through the neutral zone. Looking to center the puck. The Owls playing it nicely. Sent it back to the left wing. To the point position and back. Tried to center it up. And Charles Giazza with a nice defensive play. Number five to the point position. A shot to the glove of Shelley. Another save. Two saves back to back. And the Owls will clear out with 26 remaining on the power play. Another reminder that the penalty kill is sponsored by Richie's. Andrew Kayser eats at Richie's. Number 12 at the faceoff circle. Tried to win that, could not. So now Kyle Smedley playing in nicely. Cornell forced to change. Looking for a window of opportunity at the point position back to the right. Looking for a shot that went just high of the net over the left shoulder of Matt Shelley. And now Cornell forced to backtrack with six seconds remaining on the power play. And we're going to move back to even strength hockey. Jack Pierce out of the box for the Owls. Sent to the net. Another save by Matt Shelley. Cornell looking to handle. Back behind the net. Playing it nicely was Charles Giazza, number five. And Giazza will dump it out. And Cornell forced to retrieve. And icing will be called. Solid penalty kill. I, I, I say that solid so far. Especially Shelley. He's really looking really comfortable. I, this is almost like Ben Auerbach's in that now, so it's, it's his experience earlier in the season is paying off now. He's playing really solid and really good. Defense is playing pretty well in front of them. They have some active sticks plus blocking some shots, but they have to do better of getting the puck out of their zone before it hurts them. Temple looking to do just that. Mike Cornell still has it in behind Shelley. Not too much offense so far from the Owls. 12 shots to 2 favoring the Big Red. Scores 0-0 with 11-15 remaining in the first period at the York. Andrew Kayser now handling the puck behind the cage. Backtracks. Finds number five, Charles Giazza. And Giazza sent that over to Smedley. Smedley looking for Brendan Ondick. Brendan Ondick could not handle the puck. And now Cornell moving up the ice, looking for a window. Tries to send it to the front. Another glove save by Matt Shelley, number 30. Shelley, phenomenal so far. And now at the faceoff circle for the Owls, number 61, Thomas Pinella. Max Hucker out there, knocked that one down. Jason Ferguson and another stoppage of play. Almost half a period surpassed us. Score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Once again, I am Taylor Snyder on the call, joined by Michael Zingroni if you are just tuning in. The Temple Owls coming off an overtime winner last night, 3-2 against the Naval Academy. Brendan Ondick was the hero last week versus Towson last night, Captain Charles. Cornell coming off an overtime winners himself. 3-2. Thomas Pinella trying to play the puck, keep it in. Will Green was out there to retrieve. And now Temple forced back in to the Cornell zone. Michael Ionari out there for the Owls, number 20. Another stoppage of play called. Fresh legs will come on the ice for the Owls and for the Big Red. At the faceoff circle for the Owls is Thomas Pinella, or excuse me, Jared Giovan is out there now. And now handling behind the net is Max Hucker. Tried to do a little dangle to the front, a wraparound of some sorts, but Kiel t or t Taken Kiel, excuse me, got to get used to that name. Taken Kiel number 37 was waiting there for that puck, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's good effort. I mean, as long as you get the puck to the front of the net. So it's good that they're, they're aware of the problem, that they get, start getting pucks to, uh, to the front of the net because they're getting heavily outshot now. Yep, 13 shots to two thus far. Temple, for once, has the puck in the Cornell zone. Let's see if it lasts. 
Cornell looking to punch it out, and they will do just that. Cornell once again moving into the neutral zone. The Owls having a tough time handling the puck. Ian Bowles, number 42, out there for the Owls. Jared Giovon just had to dump that back in. Fresh legs coming on. I think after an emotional win, especially against Navy last night, arguably the biggest game of the season, could, could be a little sluggish to start. That's what it looks like right now. Cornell's doing a good job just coming right after them. But I think it'll be sooner rather than later with Temple will start getting their feet under them because they might be a little sluggish right now. Garrett Elmer moving up the ice. The right wing. There goes Garrett Elmer trying to send it to the front. Looking for Sean Fowler, I believe that was. Could not get it there. And so Cornell once again moving in transition and the whistle is blown. Tough sledding there from Ryan Hornung, number 87. At the face-off circle, number 84, Garrett Elmer. Cornell once again with the puck in the Temple zone. Moving up behind the cage was number 91, Alex Ewald. Ewald sent us to the point position. A shot to the front. Another save by Matt Shelley. Having himself a good first period. You talk about how he could handle bodies in front of the net. Had two Cornell players within a couple feet of him inside the crease. Saw it nice and cleanly, right into the breadbasket. We got a face off to his right. So, so far, so good for Matt Shelley. Andrew Kayser out there again for the Owls handling face off duties. Brendan Ondick playing out there with his buddy Charles, number five. Charles behind the cage now. Dumps it back to Smedley. Smedley trying to find McDowell, could not do that. So Matt Shelley has to be cautious there. The puck was coming back towards his net. He wasn't even looking. Charles Giazza deals it now to Andrew Kieser. Kieser looking for McDowell. McDowell wasn't looking for the puck. Hmm. And now I believe an icing will be called. So the puck will move back down to Shelley's end of town. Interesting icing call as it went through. It looked like both the Temple and Cornell players skate. So maybe a chance to play it on if, uh, if you're Cornell. But refs see otherwise. And... Another defensive zone faceoff for Temple. Yep. Got to start tallying these defensive zone faceoffs, my guy. It's almost like 11 to 2, I think, so far. Oh, at least. McDowell moving up the ice. Trying to handle it. Temple has not kept the puck in their zone for very long. Let's see if that can change right here with Brendan Onik and Charles Giazza out there. Temple sent one to the front, went high of the net. Taking Keel, no problem. And now Charles Giazza backpedaling. Almost a two on three develop in front of the net was Smedley with another nice defensive play. He's been sharp thus far. I like this defensive pair of Yaz and Smedley. They've been playing they've been playing pretty solid so far. Pretty solid. Maybe could have limit the shot opportunity just a little bit and get some more offense developed, but other than that, I, I like how they're looking so far. Cornell handling it behind their own cage, moving up the ice. Number twenty four, Chris Williams out there. I want to get your take, Mike, a little, a little separate from the actual game. What's your take on black hockey helmets versus red hockey helmets for a red uniform? Um, it's interesting. I, if you're going red on red, you might as well go red on red on red on red. You know, keep the red going. It's interesting. You got a white and a black bucket out there, but I, I think it looks better with the red. A little uh, winter classic Red Wings look. 100%. Yeah, that, that was definitely the vibe I was getting from it. Matt mm -hmm. Shelley in his usual red face mask. Mm -hmm. You've trademarked Pony Boy Ben Auerbach, who uh, his white face mask stayed on the bench tonight. Number 30. Excuse me, number 30 would be Matt Shelley. I guess Ben would be number 31. 31. Yep. yep. Pony Boy Ben Auerbach. I don't know. Like, Matt Shelley keeps playing up. He might, he, he might uh, get himself a nice little nickname, too. The Owls with another chance trying to send it to the front on the follow-up was Chris Ionari. Brendan Ondick had one sent to the front that went off the blocker. And now Ionari moving up the ice, number 20. Just unfortunate, Ian Airy, if he was a left-handed shot, he might have had that angle because Keel was off his off his uh off his position, but unfortunately right-handed shot didn't have enough time to get to the backhand and lift it up, so had to get a shot off but could only get to the side of the net with the angle. A correction on the broadcast, Michael Ionary, not Chris, excuse me, number twenty. Number ninety-three, Jason Ferguson, handling the puck. It was blown dead before he could even get there. So now a face-off will move all the way in to Tegan Keel's zone. Number eight, Ryan McDonald out there right now for the Cornell Big Red. Mike, what have you seen out of Cornell's offense thus far? 
they keep moving. They're, they're, they're very pressure oriented, it seems so far, that they keep attacking a puck. Wherever the puck goes, it always seems like there's at least one Cornell pl uh, player going towards the direction of that puck. Jared Giovon out there, number 41, passed it back to Maurer. He was way off sides. No dispute there. So another stoppage of play, 14 to 5. Temple was able to get two shots in the last time they were on this end of the ice. What is is this like the 40th face-off of this game so far? It could be. Well, <laughs> r well around 40. I, I think there's a couple of things we need to start tallying. That's that's face-offs in Jelly Zone. Mm -hmm. And what was the other tally? Just, fa just face-offs in total. Face-offs in total and face-offs uh -huh. in Jelly Zone. Chili punched that one away. A shot sent to the front of the net. Tom's and Bricky number nine looking to I think play the other, along the I think boards. the other thing we wanted to tally was uh, bread basket saves by Shelly. Yes, bread basket saves important for the economy. <laughs> And now Cornell backed up in their own zone. A rarity tonight. Temple actually playing some pressure. Tom Zimbricki was there on the play. Cornell looking to center it up. Hit the back of the net. Not much work for Shelley and then handled by Sean Fowler. It's now Garrett Russell on the chase. Number 26. Could he beat him there? He won't. Now Ryan McDonald out there at the point handling it on his lonesome. Sends a shot to the right off the blocker of Shelley. Another nice save. Rebound control has been really good from Shelly, too. It's either he's crowding the puck, uh, forcing a face-off, or puck's going off his pad into the corner. Garrett Elmer sends it to Russell now, number 26, way off sides on that play, I believe, with Sean Valor. I think it's important to note that we have two Garretts on this team, Garrett Russell and Garrett Elmer, 26-84 in their own respects. The Garretts out there. The Garretts. Is there a chance that Garrett can get on the score sheet tonight? Ooh. Garrett, I, I Garrett Russell scored the second goal yesterday. I believe so. Uh, I'm not going to say because I just love everyone so much. I'm not going to say which one. I just hope both Garretts have fun. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's really all it's about. Mm -hmm. Charles Giazza with a shot that was blocked down before it could even reach there. Temple doing a good job of keeping it in. Kyle Smedley, number 15, sent it to round to Brendan Ondig. Temple has their killers out there. On a one-time shot that was sent to the front. Follow-up chance. Rebound. The Owls. Could not punch it in. Wow. Tegan Keel, number 37. How did he save that? Well, it looks like he got a stick out there. Just just hit the puck before it can be slammed home. And that sort of calls the scramble from there. And the puck found its way behind the net. Another shot to run to the set. Scores! Put it down. Write me up. Sign me up. one nothing Temple. 444 to go in the first period. Well, Keel just made a great save, but he's unable to do it twice in a few seconds as as McDowell hits the puck hard, gets it right through the, looks like the five hole of Teal. The, the puck was in the slot, and it looks like Temple stopped playing around the offensive zone and just getting pucks to the net, and McDowell does that with authority and slams it home. one nothing lead for the Owls, 440 remaining. Cornell has got the better of quality scoring chances in this game. Temple got one and they took advantage of it. The Owls out in front, 1-0. And now Garrett Elmer moving up the left wing, trying to center it. He was pushed up against the boards. The York is alive. 4.22 to go. While Shelley won't get a point for that goal, he, he sure deserves one with his performance in the first 15 or so minutes of this first period. Unable to see who got the tally. I believe it was Charles Giazza. It was too close to call. Uh, no, Mc, uh, it was McDowell. McDowell got, got the yeah. tally? Okay. So no, I believe Giazza got an assist on it. Okay. Cornell now handling it behind the cage. Have had the better opportunities in this game. Seems like just moments ago they were going to jump out to a one, maybe two nothing lead. Temple got one opportunity and took advantage of it. It's one nothing Owls. Temple looking for another opportunity. Has done a better job of keeping it in the past two minutes. But Cornell now moving in transition through the neutral zone. Looks to center it on the defensive play was number 93, Jason Ferguson. And now Sean Fowler just steals it right away. Could be a three on two developing. Sean Fowler moving up the ice. Tried to put on a deke. Could not do that. And puts his hands up for the what for. Sean Fowler, Academy Award winning actor now. Will skate his way back. <laughs> Cornell tried to center it, not much of it. And now Pinella looking for Sean Fowler. Didn't put enough juice on the pass. Fowler had a wide open highway to Rancho Cucamonga. And some. And some. And some. All the way to Los Angeles. 
Pinello out there, number 91, Austin Maurer out there as well. Cornell haven't done a good job of handling it the past minute. A rarity for the Big Red in this game. Who, frankly, the first 10 minutes, Mike, seemed to outstick handle the Owls. Yeah, they, they outshot them by far. They definitely outchanced them. And th they definitely had a lot more time on attack than Temple. But the last few minutes, this, this game started to turn into a ping pong match in a sense. Cornell now moving into the front of the net. A nice shot by Jack Pierce, number 18. On the follow-up chance was Cornell. Tom Zimbricki there again. Send it to the front of the net. Shot scores! Well, it was a matter of time before Cornell broke the ice on their respective parts. And Shin does a good job getting the puck. Who, that trickles out into the slot. Then he just puts it by Shelley. And that was probably Cornell's first opportunity in their first 16 shots where they were all alone within a couple feet in front of Shelley, all alone in the slot and high, a very high dangerous scoring opportunity. And they had it and they cashed in. Game side at one. Cornell took their chance. It's even now 1-1, 2-13 remaining. Got some good hockey here, Mike, picking up in the past five minutes. Oh, yeah, this game's definitely picking up. And it was just a matter of time before Temple gave up a goal the way they've been sort of back on their heels for the good part of the first period. McDowell back out there. Number 38 has the lone goal in this game. Looking for Kayser. Kayser now handling the puck. Looking for McDowell. Kayser playing it up against the boards. We'll find McDowell eventually. Thought about passing it to Ian Bowles. He was covered up nicely. And now Ian Bowles will handle a shot that was sent to the front on the redirect. Almost found its way. Cornell looking to dump it out. Temple looking to keep it in. Tom Zimbricki is there. Number nine. Andrew Kayser. And the puck pops out into the neutral zone, so Temple is forced to reset. He's almost had a sick deflection goal, just trickled through the goal mouth. Temple able to handle it back on the ice is Ondick with a nice move. Ian Bowles now playing up against the board. Oh, sent us out to the front. That's two shots from Ian Bowles tonight that have almost trickled their way. Matt Shelley makes a play day out of it. Easy routine save. Sean Fowler now, number 77. Moving up the ice into the neutral zone was stopped in his tracks. And now Cornell, a two on two and an off sides is called. Whether they have a great angle or not, every time Temple's in the offensive zone and they just find a way to get that little rubber circle towards Keel and towards the front of the goal mouth, it almost seems like they have a very high dangerous opportunity to score. While their 10 shots might not be all amazing shots from the slot, every time they get the puck in front of the net, they always have a real prime opportunity. Andrew Kieser, number 12, at the dot for Temple. We have 57.3 seconds remaining in the period. The score is even at 1-1. Kieser now, backed up, will take his time. Looking for Smedley. Smedley tried to send it to the left for Garrett Russell. Garrett Russell could not handle, so now Cornell once again on transition. Playing it nicely again was Smedley. And now Kyle Smedley moving up the left wing. It could be a three-on-one developing. Garrett Elmer with a nice move. Back to Smedley. A shot right to the glove of Tegan Keel. Yeah, they had a three-on-one. Cornell did a good job of getting back, sort of negating the three-on-one, making it sort of a three-on-two, three-on-two and a half in a sense. And Temple was able to get a shot off. Not the most dangerous shot on a potential three-on-one, but at least a puck to the net. A face-off in the Cornell zone. Handled by Andrew Kieser, a shot sent to the front by Charles Giazza. A deflection or two might have put that one on the back of the net. Yeah, Giazza, he played forward for a majority of the year, now moving back to defense. A couple, I think the most standout thing on him playing defense this game is his ability to get the puck through bodies and able to get have sort of a seeing eye shot in a sense. That's the second time where a puck went on net from a, a point shot from Giazza. Giazza now looking for it. Never reached him. And now Cornell moving up in the zone. Up the right wing is Cornell. A shot to the bread basket of Shelley and Ryan Hornung. Little hip check at the end. No retaliation from either team. 10.5 seconds remaining in the first period. 17 to 12. Cornell with the shot advantage. One to one. The score is even. And now the officials will have to put Matt Shelley's net back where it belongs. Yeah, Horn, uh, Hornug, the Cornell's leader in penalty minutes with 35, was running like a bad man towards the net. <laughs> he wanted, he wanted that penalty minute. Yeah. Five was, seconds remaining a bit. in the first period. Three seconds, two, one. A period of hockey, 
under our belt. One goal scored for the Temple Owls. One goal scored for the Cornell Big Red. It is even one apiece at the end of the first period. Welcome back to the Old York Ice Rink. I am Taylor Snyder, joined by my partner, Michael Zingroni, bringing you the first intermission report. One-to-one -one after one period of play, Mike, between the Cornell Big Red and the Temple Owls, but number 30 has been the most impressive so far for you. Oh, by, by far he's looking like the most – probably looking like the best player on the ice so far in that first period. Matt Shelley making a lot of bread basket saves. Cornell has 17 shots. They had, I think it was like 12 shots in the first, roughly about 10 or 11 minutes. And he really, because this game could have got out of hand early, but, you know, Shelley was doing a great job of staying in position, made a number of bread basket saves, didn't give up any big rebound so he, he he was a he's a large part why this game is only 1-1. Shelly entering today 2-13 and 13 on the season as I mentioned during the broadcast got a lot of burn when Auerbach was out in the middle of the season and he struggled his fair amount but tonight the Temple Owls defensively are doing a great job of letting him see the puck. Who's impressing you the most on defense right now for I Temple? think it's Charles Giazza. It's, it's not easy just to you know out of nowhere you're playing center yesterday and then today you're playing left defense so I don't think it's too easy to make that transition just in one day no matter what level of hockey you're playing at so he's doing a good job of keeping his stick active he's, he's active on the body he's doing a good job of clearing the puck. You mentioned Charles size which I thought was uh, a good thing to mention because he is so tall uh, what sort of skill set do you think he's been using to his advantage to be able to play both positions so well? Definitely his reach because uh, especially on that penalty kill earlier in the first period he did a good job of moving his stick out in the passing lanes a few times to break up some passes so I think he's doing a good job of using his length, using his reach to sort of not make it easy for Cornell to get all get it through all these passing lanes and just to dribble the puck right in the Cornell right in the zone. Cornell, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mike. Cornell controlled most of that first period, it seemed like, but at the end there, the Owls took the one nothing lead. What did you see on that goal from Temple? They did towards the end of the period. They did a good job of just getting the puck just towards the net, not even necessarily on net, just towards in the middle of the net and. Before that, I believe it was Andrew Kaiser who had a great chance on Keel, but Keel, you know, stood up with his stick, made a couple of great saves, and Sean McDowell just saw a loose puck in the slot and just rammed it home. So Temple was doing a good job, especially towards later in the period, just being in the slot, just being there, then eventually the puck will go in the net. Line changes tonight from head coach Mark Spies. Who has stood out that shouldn't be standing out or usually doesn't stand out tonight? Who do you think is really standing out tonight? I think it's the goal scorer. I'm just going to go with the easy answer, go with the goal scorer, McDowell. He's been pretty active. I feel like I, I keep hearing his name come out of your mouth, which means he's doing a lot of things to be in the game. And he's moving fast. He's moving with the puck. He's moving without the puck. Then he got rewarded with the goal of being in the right place at the right time. So I think it's Sean McDowell. He's kind of impressing me early on. Out of conference game for the Owls, 4-10 and ten in conference play. Set up in a nice position, but you still want to get as many wins as possible, not only for your confidence, but for the burn's sake, for guys to get out there, get time, and stay active on the ice. What do the Owls need to do to stay in this game heading into the second period evened out? I think it started formulating over the first period. They're getting a little more into the game after an emotional overtime win uh, last night against Navy. Could come out on your heels just a little bit, could come out just a little slow. But, you know, as the first period started going on, they're going faster and faster. So I expect to see what we saw in the last few minutes from Temple. I expect to see that as we start the second period. Ryan Hornung, number 87 on Cornell. Didn't hear his name a lot in that first period. What do the Owls need to do to make sure we don't hear his name in the second period? They just got to get the puck out of the defensive zone as soon as possible. I feel like especially early in the first period, they were trying to pass it out a little too much. But Charles Giazza, on uh, him at defense, what he was doing well, he was just chipping it out there. Get, letting the puck get out there, letting a line change happen, letting Temple's four checkers go after the puck. So I think they just need to, as soon as the puck gets in, they need to get it out as soon as possible before Cornell starts peppering these shots on net. All right, well, that'll do it from the first intermission report. I am Taylor Snyder, joined by Michael Zingroni. Stay tuned, folks. We have second period hockey coming your way from New York. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the York second period hockey about to get underway. If you are just joining us back, it is one to one. The Temple Owls hosting the Cornell Big Red, the visitors from Ithaca, New York. 
Face-off will begin momentarily. Mike, I want to get your thoughts there. We talked a lot about the first period at the intermission. What do you predict will transpire in the second period? Do you think just as much scoring, or are we just going to get a whole birthday box of goals right now? I think we're going to get closer to the birthday box of goals. I think towards the end of the first period, Temple started finding our legs and getting, getting to the energy they were playing at against Navy yesterday. And I think at the start of the second period, they'll jump out fast. Cornell's been fast this whole game, so I, I predict a, a lot of back and forth this period. Number 12, Andrew Kieser at the faceoff circle for the Owls. Cornell quickly takes control. Goalies will switch places. Matt Shelley at the opposite end. Cornell looking to just punch that in. Ryan McDonald was there, number eight. Matt Shelley wasn't having any of it. I got my nickname for Shelley, but I don't want to say it yet because I don't want to jinx anything. So if this performance keeps continuing, I, I, I think it's a simple nickname. Okay. We'll, we'll keep that one in the back pocket. Yep. Taken kill number 37, whose name we just absolutely adore. He is on our corner now. We're going to be getting a lot more of him. Temple looking to punch it out. Cornell once again taking control of the period early on. 30 seconds have gone by. And the whistle is blown. Number 38, McDowell back out there for the Owls. Sean McDowell to be exact. Uh, net off its moorings. Oh well, boy. I was, I was thinking a penalty for a second, but these nets come off their moorings pretty easily. Only one penalty call in this game, Mike. A five on four that went advantage. Cornell could not capitalize on it. Yeah, the clean on both sides. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I draw back to that game last week when Temple had against Towson. That was a very physical, very gritty game. A lot of chirping between both teams, but th this game seems just simple hockey. Let's just play some hockey. That's what it seems like tonight. Taking Keel, cover that one up, and now the faceoff will be in the Cornell zone. I'm growing very accustomed to this view, Taylor. We're really on top of the action, especially down here. I, I love this view now. It, it definitely is something, and the view for people at home, uh, we try to give them the best. Uh, whatever they get, we, we pretty can. much get. Yeah, best yep. we can. So Nothing better than some Saturday afternoon hockey, 459. Nothing better than that. Nothing better than Saturday afternoon hockey. 4.59 here on the clock outside. 8.54 on the clock inside. Temple now just looking to get it out of their own zone. Have not had a shot yet. At least one decent one that went towards taking Keel number 37. One shot for the Owls this entire period. An easy cover up. Sean Fowler now handles it. Looks to move up through the neutral zone. Tried to find Garrett Russell, number 26. Russell was covered up nicely. Cornell moving back into their zone. And it's a nice old-fashioned game of, I'm going to try to score. Oh, no, wait, I can't. Hmm. Cornell backpedaling into the neutral zone. Handling it now is Sean Fowler moving up the left wing. Garrett Russell now will handle. Hmm. Garrett Russell, he's going to go to the box. Puts Cornell player down. That's going to be a penalty. Business cards exchanged after Garrett Russell. A nice little shove, and we do have a delayed penalty call coming. And Russell will get his final word in before he has to go to the bad boy box. Yeah, John Bush came uh, came up from behind on Russell, gave him a little shot in the back, knocked Russell down while Russell's on the ground, got a stick up in the hands of Bush, and that's going to be a penalty. Yep. So now a power play advantage for the Cornell Big Red Mike converting on 12.9% of their power plays. What do you have to say about the Temple kill? Um, it, it looked good the first time. It really didn't allow Cornell to get anything too crazy um, as far as dangerous-wise, as far as their scoring chances. So I expect to see the same. The penalty kill's been looking really good the last few days, and especially when Shelley's playing the way he is today. You, not too many worries. A shot that was sent to the front of Shelley off the blocker. Temple on the kill. And now moving with the puck is Brendan Ondick up the left side. He's on his lonesome, puts on a nice move. Ondick to the front. A shot that almost got through Tegan Keel. Cornell will slow things down for a minute. Temple had an opportunity. Yeah, I think they, Temple can definitely get a shorthanded goal on Cornell. Cornell's very, very attack heavy. They really want to go towards the net. So I think if you get the puck going against the grain, you might get a, be able to get a rush like Ondick just had. Now, Cornell sends a shot to the front of the net. Did not reach it. Shelley, no problem. Backpedaling into his own zone, number 17, Ray Rodriguez, entering the game with eight assists. That's a team high. Handling it now is Charles Giazza behind his own cage. Slows it down for just a second. Went full send across the entire length of the ice. 
Looks like Sean Fowler may have tried to come off there, but he will stay on. And now Cornell moving with it up the right wing. Tried to send it to the left. Could not do that. Blocked out in front by Kyle Smedley, having himself a sharp game, Mike. A shot that was sent to the front off the blocker of Shelley. Handling the puck now, number 19, Dong Young Shin. Shin now passes it back to his counterpart at the point. Takes a shot sent wide right of the net. Cornell able to keep it in the Temple zone. Back to Shin. Shin tried to send it up. And now Sean Fowler thought about making a move. Nothing of it, though. So Garrett Elmer comes off the ice. Once again, Fowler remains. Been out there for over two minutes now. Yeah, very long shift for Sean Fowler. I, I wonder if he's thinking about taking a break soon. Now Matt Shelley with a nice save. Moving up into the neutral zone is Cornell once again, number 15, Dylan Jones. Jones could not handle it for too long. And Jones once again off the bounce from Shin. Smedley now moving up the wing. Smedley into the neutral zone. Trying to find Jack Pierce. Pierce was not ready for it. Jared Giovan, number 41, on the ice for the Owls. Behind his own net now is Tegan Keel, number 37, handling it. Cornell sent one. Looks like it could have been a pass slash clear. Shelley gets a stick on it. It still will be called for icing. This game's getting really interesting. I, I feel like this is a really interesting game. This is. This has been, so far, Mike, I want to say a 1-1 hockey game. I mean, we, we were here last weekend for the Towson game, a 1-0 mm -hmm. victory. Last night, the overtime winner over Navy, 3-2 beat Penn State Burks in this building. I always have a bit of a win streak going on here in New York. Yeah, as you mentioned, they're, they're seven and eight at home. As you mentioned, they won their last two games. Cornell's only four and six on the road. So Cornell can be had when, uh, when I guess they're away from the great state of New York. The great state of New York. The great white north, as they call it, moving up in the neutral zone is the great white northerners. Tried to send one to Shelley, one that was blocked down. Goes wraparound style. If he had the window, he had the goal. Could not find the window, though. A shot was blocked down in front. Temple once again moving in transition, and it's Austin Maurer. Sends it back to Pierce, back to Maurer. Maurer playing up against the boards. Took a shot at the end of the play from Liam Vinyl. Moving up in the neutral zone. Now number 24, Chris Williams. Chris Williams tried to put a move on Ian Bowles. Ian Bowles wasn't quite ready for the follow-up shot that almost reached Sally. Back on the ice for the Owls, number nine, Toms and Brookie took some shots tonight. Austin Maurer trying to move it up. Jack Pierce was not quite ready for movement. And now Zimbricki, speaking of the devil, will clear it out to Tegan Keel. Will Green, number 11, back out on the ice. Have not heard much of his name tonight. Number 11 played a huge role in the one nothing win over Towson. Made some key plays to keep it 0-0. Moving up through the ice now, Cornell tried to move it to the left wing. Could not do that. And now backpedaling is Zimbricki to crowd favorite Jason Ferguson. And up through the neutral zone. I feel like Temple's at their best, and especially in the neutral zone when they're just skating with the puck. It looks like Cornell... They're best in the neutral zone when they're passing around, but when Temple's just skating through the neutral zone, that's when they sort of get their best chances. A shot that was sent to the front from Leon Vinyl, a glove save for Matt Shelley. 13 saves, or excuse me, 22 saves. That'd be 22 shots for the road team, 22 saves for Matt Shelley, allowed one. Only 13 shots faced for Tegan Keel. Mike, he has looked sharp, but what is the key to start to really try to rile up this Cornell team defensively? I think you saw sort of saw it at the end of the first period. Just sort of just get pucks towards the net. It doesn't necessarily have to be a shot like we just saw from Andrew Kayser. Just necessarily just has to get the puck in the slot and just to see what happens. I, I feel like especially in the first period that that's when they got their goal and that's what they need to start getting back to. He's only have two shots this period. Trying to handle the puck was Alex Ewald, number 91 for Cornell. On the defensive play was Jack Pierce, number 18, and now McDowell with the lone goal will chase in the corner. And falling to the ice was number 17, Ray Rodriguez. And now Temple trying to get another opportunity. Sean McDowell wanted seconds. 
It, see, th that wasn't even a shot. That was just a puck that went across the goal mouth, just barely touched the crease, and you have Tegan Keel just sort of flopping all over the place. And McDowell was just a, there just a split second earlier. He, him or Brandon Ondick had a chance at a goal. So just, just pucks in the vicinity to the net can do a lot of damage. Ewald versus Elmer. Two E's at the faceoff circle. Sean Fowler handling. Sent it to the point position for Kyle Smedley. Tried to send one to the front. On the rebound was Bulls. Almost had the window. Keeping it in was Smedley. That was sent back to the front. Off the top! Iron! A deflection! Almost found its way to La La Land. And now Sean Fowler, another delayed penalty call. He's going to be called for hooking there, Mike. That was an easy call. Well, yeah, that's got a little easy with the stick. Got the stick in there, but not much you can do when you're trailing the play. It was an unfortunate, uh, just an unfortunate bounce to get behind a defender, but rewind a couple seconds. Garrett Russell almost had an amazing deflection opportunity. I believe that was Smedley who sent, it wasn't, wasn't the craziest shot. It was, it was a nice little shot in. It had some air on it, and Garrett Russell with a beautiful deflection just gets the crossbar. Had had the goalie beat with a bunch of bodies in front. Number 77, Sean Fowler going to the box for tripping. The ref disputed that it was tripping rather than hooking. Must have not gotten enough stick on him for him to call it hooking, Mike. Yeah, it looked more so of a, of a tap down rather than a pull down. Now falling to the ice is Andrew Keezer. Cornell moving up in the zone. Try to get a three on two on the back pedal though was Brendan Ondick in position. And now Cornell with another shot to the front of this, the cage of Shelley, excuse me. Shelley had to go horizontal there. Cornell backpedaling now into their own zone. Tegan Keel handles. And Ryan Hornung, number 87, moves up. Cornell in the neutral zone. Looking to pass it to the left. Can't find anything of it. He will backpedal. Puts the brakes on. To the back of the cage now, handling. On the defensive play was number 15, Kyle Smedley. Smedley now pinned up in his own corner. Bailing him out was Andrew Keezer, who falls to the ice. Andrew Keezer, he's averaging about two falls per shift right now for the Temple Owls. Looked like he got hooked down a little bit by Ross Allen on Cornell, but apparently the rest have a better angle than me. Chris Williams now handling it behind the net for Cornell. On the chase back was Shin. And now, skating up the ice is Brendan Ondick. Will he beat him there? He won't. And Hornung was ready. Puts on the brakes, too much brakes. Brendan Ondick almost had an opportunity at a wraparound goal. Brendan Onik now handling the puck. Tried to have another opportunity. Did not reach. And Cornell, quick heart attack, will finally handle. Onik put a hit on Hornung at the end of the play. Cornell now moving up the right wing. Skates around. Looks to send it to the top. A deflection that went off Kyle Smedley. Did not make it to uh, Shelley. A one-time shot that went high of the net. Ryan McDonald handling at the point. Sends it to the left wing. And back to the point position. A shot that was sent front to the net, wide left. On the follow-up opportunity, another save by Matt Shelley. One to one, the score remains. Interesting they flew the plate that. I don't think anybody had that puck covered. But I, I think it I think it's continuously the net just keeps falling off his moorings. I saw when the puck was down here, uh, when Temple was attacking, Shelley was having a conversation with the ref to try to figure out what they can do about the net because it doesn't look like it's too sturdy right now. No. One to one, 10-23 remaining in the first period. 22 shots to 16. Cornell with the advantage. Temple will handle it in the face-off circle. And now Temple will handle behind their own cage. Just looking to not make too many mistakes right now. The Owls have been limited in that smart hockey thus far from both teams. And now moving up the right wing is Cornell. A centering pass. It goes to the top left corner. A shot. And does score the big red. Jump out in front with 10.04 to go. Number 91, Alex Ewald. Well, Cornell's... He's tied for a leading scorer with Shin, but he is now the leading scorer. He has 11 goals. 12 assists for 23 total points. It's just, it was a matter of time before Cornell really got that big break, and they just got him behind the Temple defense, and, you know, Ewald is able to put it above the glove hand of Matt Shelley. Alex Ewald, number 91, getting the goal, and the big red Mike in the second period have now jumped out to their first lead of the game. It was around this time in the first period where we started seeing Temple have their legs, uh, um, have start finding their legs and start really attacking in their own respective way. So it was about this time in the first period. So let, let's see if they can do it now. 
A shot that was sent to the front and almost went through the bread basket of Matt Shelley. He covered up. Two to one remains. Shelley doing a good job of keeping the Owls close in this game. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Temple might start be playing with fire a little bit. They need to start finding their game. It's not too long Shelley could really continuously bail them out. At the faceoff dot for the Cornell, Big Red is James Check which is just a phenomenal name against Will Green. Will Green on the defensive play, a shot that was sent, a routine save for Shelley into the bread basket. Speaking of great names, out at left defense for, uh, for Cornell, number 25, Jack Bookbinder. Jack Bookbinder, number 25. Have not uh, seen too much of him in this game. As much as we hoped, I guess, with the name. Now moving up the left wing is Cornell. A wrist shot right to the glove of Matt Shelley. Another routine save. 9-16 to go in the second period. If you are just joining in, it was the Cornell Big Red led by Alex Ewald, number 91, getting the goal to send Cornell to a 2-1 to -one lead out front of the Owls in their home barn. Owls playing nicely here in this building this year. 7-8 and eight on this ice. Have won three straight on this ice. Looking to make it four straight tonight. Cornell, though, with the advantage now. And a pass that was sent to behind the net to Ross Allen. Ross Allen handling the puck. Looking back, number 25, stick on the ice was Jack Bookbinder. Speaking of the devil, back out there for the Cornell Big Red. And now Temple moving up in the neutral zone. It is McDowell with the game's lone goal out there now. McDowell looking for another opportunity. He sent to Brendan Ondick. A shot that went wide left of the net. Brendan Ondick had the window. And now a whistle will be blown. Brendan Ondick knows he had a chance there, Mike. Yeah, uh, play blown dead for a hand pass. But Ondick, he had a chance. It was a great pass. I believe it was from Pearson uh, uh, giving it to Ondick in the slot. He had that opportunity. I saw him in practice the other day. Ondick really trying that from the uh, left to right shot in the slot, but just lifts it a little too high as he almost had the far corner. Andrew Kieser has handled most of the face-off duties tonight for the Temple Owls. A shot that was sent from, I believe, Brendan Ondick off the stick of number 15. That would have been Dylan Jones into the netting. So now replay that down, as they say. Andrew Kieser here at the dot. A neutral draw. And now can't keep it in as Max Hucker and Cornell now could be a two-on-one developing. Tried to send it back to the front. And Shelley with a nice save. Not enough juice on the shot. Through the neutral zone, sending it up. Andrew Kieser on the chase. Take and kill. Covers up. Says, I've had enough of this party. It was a good try by Brandon Ondick to see a little, little lob through pass, as they will say in soccer. Try to get it up over the head. But apparently ice is a slick surface, so the puck just skidded on and allowed Keel to cover up. Nice through pass there at the face-off circle, I believe was number 84, Garrett Elmer. And now Temple through the neutral zone, plays it off his own bounce, I believe was Ionary. And now covered up by Tegan Keel. Garrett Russell, number 26, was the one who played his own bounce. He is back out there for the Owls. Mike, you mentioned his name a lot. Got an assist last night against Navy. A couple of guys out there, Mike, have played really sharp tonight. One standing out to me is Smedley. What have you seen from him so far in the defensive play? He, he's, he's going really well with Giazza. Sort of Giazza is the bigger defenseman. Smedley sort of the more active, flying around a defensive zone defenseman. So I kind of like I kind of like the way, they, the little dynamic they have between those, uh, those two. And now Cornell looking to send one to the front. Not enough power on the shot. A little too easy there for Matt Shelley. He'll cover up. Cornell shouldn't even have had that chance. It, it, it bounced off, the, as, as you see, the Zamboni entrance over there. It looks like the little, I, think, I guess the boards aren't, aren't completely even. And Smedley tried to wrap it around the boards, but it hits a, little, hits a little pocket and pops out right into the slot. At the face-off dot, Cornell wins. Sent to the top. Keeps it in is the big red. No, they do not. It trickled out. Number six could not handle it. That was Chase Habig. And now Temple on the backtrack. Charles Giazza, not the best defensive play. A good chance there for Cornell. Went wide of the net. And now Temple forced to backtrack. Still in Temple zone. Sends it to the top. A shot sent to the front of the net. Almost went off the redirect. Looked like it could have hit someone's skate there. Still somehow stays in the Temple zone. 
And now Jack Pierce, number 18, trying to clear it out. Charles Giazza will help, and they do into the neutral zone reset. That looked like a Cornell power play there. They're set up and everything. But 100%. Temple, Temple has five people uh, on the ice. Matt Shelley doing a phenomenal job. Has only allowed two goals in this game, one per period. A shot that was sent front of the net, wide right by number 14, Joe Dulia. And now Cornell keeps it in their own zone, looking for Dalia. Will not find him. Number six, Chase Habig on the other wing. Dalia changing off with Dong Yun Shin with an assist in this game for the big red. Jack Pierce now just looking to clear it out. A rough shift right now for Temple. Cornell is performing a science experiment. Through the neutral zone, and Tegan Keel handles it back. No icing will be called. Cornell dumps it back into the neutral zone and all the way back to Matt Shelley. 5.57 to go in the second period. Cornell out shooting the Owls 28-17 as we get a stoppage of play. The Big Red with a 2-1 to advantage. So by simple math, Temple has five shots this period, but I saw the shot count go up a shot when just a small little trickler goes in on Keel. So technically, if you want to get really scientific with this, Temple only basically has three shots this period, which is five minutes and 50 seconds left is not ideal. Three shots for the Owls, not good enough. Partially why Cornell has the two to one lead. 5.39 to go. Temple looking for a scoring opportunity. Moving up with the puck now is Will Green. Will Green fighting, battling, knocked down on his own rear. Behind the cage, handling it now is Cornell. Temple trying to keep it in the red zone. And Cornell, with ease, will handle again. Retrieving the puck now is Bowles. Hand goes up. Icing is waved off, so the puck will remain live. No stoppage. Cornell behind their own cage. Looking to add another tally. A shot that was sent to the front off the blocker of Matt Shelley. Now Charles Giazza handling it. Tried to chip it into Will Green in the neutral zone. Could not find him. Now Thomas Pinella out there, number 61. On the defensive play was Charles Giazza, the captain. A good play. Into the red zone. On the chase is Pinella. He's the only owl out there chasing right now as they get fresh legs. McDowell, number 38. The lone goal coming back out for the owls. And now moving to the front of the net is Keezer looking for a shot on a redirect. Was McDowell there? Right place, right time. Could not get enough juice. Sent to the front of the net. Off taken. Keel and into the pads. Frozen up by number 37. That was probably the best offensive sequence. The well, Maybe the second best offensive sequence this period. Earlier in the period, Russell had a chance on the deflection. Went off the crossbar. But this short little burst. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious how much fatigue might be setting in, especially uh, less than 24 hours ago having an overtime game against Navy. Andrew Kayser tried to light one up top left corner, but whiffed on the shot. Got his own rebound to keep it in. Cornell, easy pickings, will handle it going up through the neutral zone into the right wing area. Kept in the right wing area. Tried to send it to the left. Blocked down in front. And now moving up with it in transition through the neutral zone is Zimbricki. Zimbricki back there. McDowell with a nice play on the boards. Trying to back check. Knocked down by Andrew Kieser. Settled down by Brendan Ondick. Back to Kieser. Kieser tried to put a move on. Do it himself. Could not get that. Kieser over the back. Putting a valiant effort in just to keep the puck alive. Tom Zimbricki tried to keep that in. It was blocked down. And now the puck will trickle back into the Temple zone. Nicely handled by Matt Shelley. 3.32 go in the second period. Temple moving up in transition. A delayed offsides was called, I believe. And I think they will call it. Yeah, I think there was a... Actually, it was a... Uh, Kaiser played the puck with a high stick. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think that's what it was. And he was reluctant to play, so it was Cornell. So the rest will blow the whistle in the midst of the stalemate. 91 at the faceoff dock. Ewald has the goal for Cornell. The reason they're in front right now, 2-1. to one. Handled nicely by Cornell. Moving up in the zone is Chase Habig. Into the neutral zone. Played back by number 29, John Bush. And now Ewald down on the ice looking for his stick. Found it in the lost and found. Garrett Elmer tried to play it now, and Ewald moving up in transition, moves it to the left wing, not enough juice. Matt Shelley was waiting for it. 
Should have had an open net, just didn't get enough of a shot. Sorry Wide open net. If he had lifted that puck, Mike, it'd be 3-1 to one right now. 93, Jason Ferguson back out there for the Owls. Has not seen action in over five minutes. And now Sean Fowler trying to send it to the front. Went wide of the net. Trying to keep it in. A valiant effort by Jason Ferguson. But the Owls will be forced to reset. Sean Fowler, number 77, playing up against the boards right now with Habig. Duking it out. Garrett Elmer is there with Ewald. And now Elmer pressed up against the boards. The Owls just looking for another opportunity, Mike. That was the reason they were able to get that first goal in the first period. Yeah, when when they do get opportunities, it's from result of forechecking, and you can't forecheck if you don't get the puck in deep. So over the last few minutes, they're doing a better job of getting the puck in deep. Tried to center that for Garrett Elmer. Had his eye off the puck. Fresh legs on for the Cherry and White. Resetting now on the play, number 17 on Cornell. Ray Rodriguez leading the team in assists. He has one of those tonight. And now moving up in the neutral zone on the transition. Set up is Jack Pierce. Tried to chip it, it seemed like, to Garrett Elmer. Or that's Maurer out there now, excuse me, number 91. Playing the puck nicely was Jack Pierce. Cornell once again in transition, moving up the left wing. A nice defensive play by Maurer. And now Charles Giazza, C. Stands for captain. Captain Charles not on the board tonight for the Owls, Mike. Yeah, I think part of it has to do with his move to defense. He's not he's, he's not up there attacking as much. But he still has some... Shot scores! To the front of the net! Right on time, Charles Giazza! And the Temple Owls even the tables with 109 to go in the second period. It's all about timing, isn't it? Timing is everything, and it was right there for number five, Charles Giazza, listening into the broadcast through his helmet. And the Temple Owls, two goals for them, two goals against. We have a tie game with 109 remaining in the second. Mike, we talked about opportunities. What about that opportunity? Well, in the first period, Giazza did a good job of getting pucks through bodies and just getting those C&I shots to the net. And that was more... <laughs> That was just another seeing eye shot, too. Another deflection off the redirect was McDowell. Down on the ground is Tegan Keel. A shot that was sent to the front of the net, and the Owls causing some madness here. There's another Giazza seeing eye shot from the point. Those, are, those seem to be deadly so far. Cornell finally able to get it back in the Temple zone. The puck has remained in that zone, but right there, the Temple Owls causing some traffic on I-95 South. We have a tie game. Sent to the front by Cornell. Blocked down in front. Andrew Kieser now playing the puck up against the boards. 22 seconds remaining in the first period. And now through the neutral zone is Andrew Kieser. Tried to push it back to Brendan Ondick. He was covered up. 12 seconds remain. Ryan Hornung out there for Cornell. Number 87 playing up against the boards. Two seconds remain, one, and two periods of hockey have gone away. One more period remains once again, Mike. We are here tied again. Score is 2-2. Two to two. Cornell took the 2-1 to one lead. Temple, Captain Charles Giazza with the response to even it. 20 more minutes will remain in the third period, but don't you go anywhere. I will be joined by my partner, Michael Zingroni. For Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and babes, welcome back to the second period intermission report. I am Taylor Snyder here, joined by Michael Zingroni. We stand here once again, Micah, 2-2 tie game. Cornell got that first tally, Charles Giazza right on time. Plain and simple, what did you see out of the Owls in that period? Um, the exact same thing I saw in the first period. They started off a little slow, weren't really getting a lot of, a lot of scoring opportunities, let alone shots on net. Then... Towards later in the period, they start getting more and more opportunities. They're in the offensive zone a little bit more and more. Then you see Charles Yaza with one of his seeing eye shots beat Keel. Mike, you were displeased with the Owls' play for about 85% of that period, and for good reason. Can you kind of explain what exactly happened there at the end for the Owls to just all of a sudden kick it into gear? I don't. I just feels like they're feeling out the beginning of periods a little too much, and Cornell just looks like they're just going from point A to point B. We're going straight. We want to get the puck in our offensive zone. It looks like Temple, they're kind of being a little cautious with it. That's kind of their style of play, though. They're a little bit more tentative in their play, while Cornell's just going straight at them. So that can sometimes be 
not not a great matchup for a team that plays like Temple if Cornell's just coming straight at you. Forechecking such a crucial part of offensive hockey. The Owls did not forecheck too well that period. Whereas the first period, they forecheck nicely towards the end. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Owls need to come out here rocket fire, full blown, if they want to win this hockey game, or do you think this is a type of game where anyone can feel anyone out? I think I think it's a little bit of both. But Temple's two goals, they came from forechecking opportunities. They came from we're just getting the puck in a zone and just wreaking havoc, getting their forwards in there, trying to get some work, trying to get the puck in the slot area. And while it, uh, Giazza's goal wasn't from the slot, it was from the point, it came off as a result of forechecking. They were forechecking a couple seconds earlier. The puck gets out. They go right back in on the forecheck. So you can call some defensive uh, lapses from Cornell if you just get the puck in deep and just start going at it. It seemed like in that period, Mike, where his verse, the first period, Matt Shelley faced chances and opportunities, but the Temple Owls did a really good job of letting him see the puck. This period, however, there were a lot of bounces that could have gone each yep. and every single which way. He stayed calm. What has Matt Shelley, or excuse me, how have you felt about Matt Shelley's play through two periods of hockey? He's playing really solid. He's looking really calm, and his positioning is something that's really standing out to me. He's having a lot of those breadbasket saves. Next time Shelley plays, we got to start the breadbasket save counter right in the beginning of the game because I feel like it's upwards of, of uh, you know, 15, 20 breadbasket saves right now. But he's doing a good job of staying calm, being in his crease in the first period. Temple, they're doing a good job of letting him see the puck, not getting too many dangerous opportunities. But in that second period, the Owls were kind of riding the fine line of what's a dangerous scoring opportunity and what's just a scoring opportunity. But Shelley did a good job of holding his own. Ryan Trebs is not out there tonight for the Owls, number 16. However, Brendan Onik is number 10. We could name so many names on this roster, Mike. If the Owls are to win this hockey game tonight, who are you looking at for the game-winning goal? Well, almost what happened in the last two games against Townsend and Navy. Arguably your two best players, Brandon Ondek and Charles Giazza. Brandon Ondek, he had a great chance in the slot. Wide open shot, but just lifted the puck a little bit too high when he tried to go far corner. Charles Giazza, he got that goal from the point. So it's almost like I'm looking at those two, Brandon Ondek especially, because he's one of the faster out players too, one of the longer ones too. So you guys, Gary Rich also has a great shot. So I'm looking at him specifically. And maybe Charles Giazza, if you can get another one of those seeing eye shots. But I'm really looking at Brandon Ondick to send us home on another game winner. A lot of mixed messages between both of the teams. If you're the head coach for the Temple Owls, which is Mark Spies, what are you telling your team heading into the third period? You have to start out fast. I mean, this is the third period. You're not going to have any more periods after this. I mean, if Cornell comes out quick and gets two or three goals in the beginning of the period, which they arguably could have, definitely at least in the second period, they could have jumped out, got three goals in the first five minutes and in the first period as well. So you have to start out fast. You, you don't want to play from behind. You don't have to, you don't have to um, depend on another seeing eye shot or another lucky bounce to get the puck into the slot to tie this game up again. You want to come out fast, and you want to make Cornell play from behind, see how they react. The Owls trying to come out fast. In the third period, they have won three straight games in this barn, trying to make it four straight. That'll do it from the second period intermission report. Taylor Snyder joined by Michael Zingroni. Don't you go anywhere, boys and girls. We got one more period of Thai hockey coming your way from New York in Sheltonham Township. Grab your popcorns, grab your Starburst, grab your goobers, grab your ice-cold Pepsi, whatever you got, grab it. It's 2-2 here heading into the third period at the York the Temple Owls hosting the Cornell Big Red, who will walk out victorious. The Owls trying to extend their home win streak to th four games. Three straight one here. An overtime winner last night over the Naval Academy. So exciting. So exhilarating. I'm pumped. Let's do it. I'm pretty excited, too. It's setting out to be a good third period. Kyle Smedley out there now for the Owls, number 15. Try to get a shot to the front. Just not enough sauce on that. And now... Handling it and covering up will be Tegan Keel. Great names from Cornell. Tegan Keel, Jack Bookbinder. Jack Bookbinder, Tegan Keel. I think James Jack, Check. I think Jack Bookbinder might be my favorite one of an away team so far this year. An interesting question I think you could ask the Cornell Big Red is where is James Check from? Yeah. I, if you, if you really. Is it's such a Slovakia simple or? question, <laughs> but you have to think about that a little bit. Charles Giazza now, number five. Sent one to the front earlier that evened up this game. Number five, right on time. He's out there playing forward right now. He's at the center position. Moving up, Charles Giazza. Matt Shelley looks solid so far. Entering today, 2-13. and 13, Averaging 7.2 goals allowed per game. Only two tonight for the Cornell Big Red. Great performance by number 30. And an offside called. Make 
curious to see how they do use Charles Giaz in this period. If, if co head coach Mark Spies wants to try to get him some shifts at forward, it looks like he's out there at center right now. See if he tries to get him some shifts at forward to see if he can get get another goal from his captain. Charles Giazza now winning the faceoff. Matt Shelley took a shot. Another follow-up opportunity for the Cornell Big Red to not find the back of the net. A delayed penalty call coming up. And oh. he's got his finger pointed, I, I believe, Ian Bowles. Could be wrong. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I really didn't get the best look at it. I just saw the Cornell player falling down. I don't know if I saw too much there. But I, I think the ref had a had an had an angle where he could have seen it better than me because we kind of got the back of the players, not really the front of the action. Number 42, Ian Bowles was called on the play. Jason Ferguson has to get off the ice. It's five on four hockey now. Once again, third power play of the game for the Cornell Big Red, converting this season 12.9% of their chances. 277th in the nation, ranks 17 slots behind the Temple Owls. Cornell looking for a big opportunity here with the man up. Handling it around the zone was number 19, Dong Yun Shen. And stole away from Brendan Ondik. Brendan Ondik on the breakaway. Goes backhand, front hand shot. And a save by Tegan Giel to keep this at two apiece. Brendan Ondik, deja vu, Towson University. Basically the same play. He poked it away from uh, opposition on the blue uh, on the blue line. He had a breakaway. And now Andrew Kaiser moving up the wing. Had no one else there to support him in his endover. And so now Cornell with the man up. It looks like Temple has the man up right now with the way things are going. A shot blocked down in front from Charles Giazza. Number five clears it out. Owl's doing a good job of killing off this penalty with 58 seconds to go. Definitely came out this period with probably their best jump of the game. The first and second period, they did not start like this. They're looking a lot better to begin this period. Sean McDowell out there now for the Owls. Number 38 had the game's first goal that got this party going. Cornell, though, despite contrary or popular belief, has the man up right now. It's Ryan Hornung. Number 87, a wraparound chance and a goal. The Cornell Big Red jump out in front 3 to 2 17 28 remaining and the owls pay for their dues that was a good play by hornug shelley didn't have his left pad on the ground he had that vertical with the post which left the five hole open cuz he didn't have the right pad over to close the five hole and hornug just stuffed it home into into the gaping in the gaping in between the legs of matt shelley so now they got to take this penalty off the scoreboard. It'll be back at even strength. Five legs on the ice now for the Temple Owls. The Cornell Big Red with a 3-2 lead. Temple with a nice jump early on. A breakaway opportunity from Brendan Ondick was shut down by Tegan Keel. And so now Cornell with a little juice back in their step will try to extend their lead here with 17.09 to go in the third period. McDonald now handling it behind the net. Sends it off to his buddy. McDonald had an open net there. Matt Shelley was not ready. Off the blocker now is Matt Shelley. And on the right wing side is Cornell. Trying to knock it down was Max Hucker. Max Hucker now will move with the puck. Sends it to Jack Pierce. Jack Pierce tried to send it back to Hucker. He was not looking for it. And now Cornell with four bodies for Temple on the other end of the ice. I believe that was McDonald number eight tried to cut the seam both teams right on call tonight 3-2 lead Cornell Big Red Temple looking to even the tables had a breakaway opportunity earlier on if you are just joining us 16-17 to go and now Garrett Elmer moving in the neutral zone passes it to buddy Charles Giazza Charles Giazza as Mike mentioned moving up to the forward position for the Owls Sean Fowler now behind the net, looking to handle. Sends it up to the front. Charles Giazza on the rebound shot, scores! Charles Giazza, move out of the way. He's coming in for seconds. And now the Temple Owls, 3-3, three to 15-59 three, to go. Well, that move to forward paid off because if he was at defense, he wouldn't be hanging around the slot waiting for some loose change. But since he was playing center, He's hanging around where the center should be, right in the middle of the slot, seeing if a puck could pop out. And he finds the loose chains and slots it behind Tegan Keel. Charles Giazza, second goal of the game for number five, the captain. And just like that, 
Three to three at the York. Cornell looking for another opportunity on the follow-up chance. Could not capitalize. Brendan Onik now handling. Sends it up to McDowell. McDowell moving in transition up the right wing. Puts a nice move on. And two blocked down in front. And the Cornell Big Red shut down the block party. 15.33 to go here at the York. A shot that was sent out. And Smedley, I don't think he'll be called for delay a game there. It could have hit a defender, but nah, we'll it see. Just it just went into the bench. Okay. My mistakes. A lot of action so far, Mike. I want to get your opinion here. Um, it's it's good. The Temple is definitely coming out with a lot more jump in the first four minutes and thirty seconds of this period, and creating for some great back and forth play. Cornell now a shot and a score. Ross Allen, number eleven, right back out in front is the Big Red. Three goals within four minutes of each other, and the Cornell Big Red quickly take back the crown. I was a bit of a knuckle puck. Cornell won a penalty. Back to Allen, then he he sends sort of a kind of a, a snap slash wrist shot on net, and, and it just knuckled its way over to the blocker side of Shelley, who tried to save it with his glove because he got fooled by the way the puck was fluttering in the air. And now Hucker on the back pedal for the Owls, Cornell behind the cage, looking at another. with that net again, Mike. <laughs> it, it's funny. It only seems like where he's at. Well, the last period, Tegan Kill really didn't have trouble with this net, but now that Shelly's down at the end, this end, he's having some trouble with it. At the face-off dot for the Owls, number five, Captain Charles Giazzo. Giaz Pierce now looking for Elmer. Elmer. Elmer will clear down. Behind the cage is Sean Fowler. Trying to handle it. Can't do that. Number five, Charles Giazza. Two goals on the day. Back out there for the Owls. Thought about passing it to Pierce. Cocked it back. And now Giazza in a bit of a situation along the boards. Pierce does a good job of keeping it in play. 14.30 to go here in the third period. Cornell strikes back in the lead. 4-3. to Ian Bowles who cannot handle it. Charles Giazza passes it to Sean Fowler. Sean Fowler now moving in neutral zone. Sends a shot to the front of the net and into the glove of Tegan Keel. These boards are causing some problems for both teams, I feel like. I, I remember in the second period, uh, down by that Zamboni entrance, it seems like part of the board just sticking out a little bit and gave a weird bounce. Then Hucker tried to play it along the boards to Bowles, but except for bouncing off, the puck just stuck along the boards. It's kind of weird. Cornell now moving up the wing. He wiped out for a second and picked up his own wipeout to keep the play alive. Hmm. Garrett Russell now moving up the left wing. Tried to get a little fancy with it. Sent to the front there was Will Green. Will Green now. Can't handle it. And now Smedley forced to backpedal. Puck was not kept in. And the Owls have to be careful they won't be called off sides here. Meanwhile, Cornell takes it right back. Right back. Will Green playing up against the board to Jason Ferguson, who sent it through the neutral zone back into Cornell territory. Cornell once again moving. Now playing it up against the boards. Ferguson clears out. And moving back now is Kieser. Kieser a shot to the front of the net. And a glove save from Tegan Keel. It almost looked like it could have gotten in there. Must have went right into his glove. From my angle, it was tough to see. Yeah, especially with those poles in the way, it makes it a little bit tough. But getting pucks on that, it's a good answer after the Cornell goal. Maybe not the best from Temple, but at least they're trying to apply some pressure. The Owls down one in this game. They only need one to tie. 4-3, to 12-42 to remain. Team sharing goals back and forth. Cornell now moving in transition. Trying to center it now is McDonald. McDonald was stopped in his tracks by Ian Bowles and now handled by Ondick. 
On Dick to Hucker. Hucker thought about it. Thinks twice. And now Andrew Kieser will pick it up from here. Brandon on Dick into the neutral zone. Played off the boards to McDowell. Scored the first goal of this game. Andrew Kieser now will pick up the wipeout from McDowell. And Cornell will pick it back up into the neutral zone. Smedley number 15 back out on the on the on Dick to Kieser. Kieser, not enough juice on the pass to McDowell. Cornell quickly, quickly back. And Ondik now moving in transition will not beat the defender to the puck. Number 14, Joe D'Elia there backpedaling. 11.30 to go in the third period. 40-26, to 26, Cornell out shooting Temple. Big Red seem to pick up the pace right now, Mike. Yeah, they, they've been playing faster all game, so it, it's kind of starting to... I, I think now we, we might be seeing this true fatigue set in. You know, within 24 hours of an emotional overtime win against Navy, now basically playing through um, five sixths of the game so far, Temple could be getting really, really tired. Sean Fowler now handles it in the neutral zone, looking for Charles Giazza. So dynamic, so powerful in these circumstances. Number five's number will be involved, no doubt about it, if the Owls are to get back in this game. I think another interesting note. This is Temple's 30th game. This is only the 19th for Cornell. So they played 11 less games. So there could be a true fatigue factor setting in, especially later in the season. Visitors from Ithaca, New York, out of conference game will not count towards the conference record. The Owls currently sitting at 4-10 and 10 in ECHA play. And in the playoff spot. And in the playoff spot, indeed. Max Hucker tried to handle it. Couldn't make much of it. Now Cornell moving back in transition. Could have been a 2-on-1, but a nice defensive play by Ian Bowles. And now handling it again is Max Hucker to Sean Fowler. Sean Fowler tried to go coast to coast. They were not fooled. Ian Bowles and Captain Charles was going to handle it before plane was blown dead. 9.59 to go, 4-3. 41 shots faced from the Tendi. Matt Shelley, what have you seen on Shelley in this period, Mike? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the nickname on you. I'm going Spider-Man Matt Shelley because of the red helmet. It kind of reminds me of Spider-Man. Okay. He's been playing well uh, this third period. He's definitely kept him in there. He's had a, faced some weird shots. He's led up two goals, but I, I think it's more so of Cornell finding those high-danger scoring opportunities better than he wore the first two periods. But so far, so good as basically the whole entire game. Garrett Russell now on the left wing for Temple. Tried to handle it. Decided he couldn't, so he was just going to lay down a hit anyway. The infamous black helmets seem to be twins of Cornell's back on the ice. And, bla <laughs> and black gloves. And, black and the black gloves. gloves. Handled now is Jason Ferguson. Jason Ferguson able to get that pass all the way through to Garrett Russell. He won't have much of it, though. Tried to center it for Jack Pierce. Yeah, that's Liam Vinyl out there with the black helmet and black gloves. And now Smedley, number 15, was the first down there to report icing to the local community. So the faceoff is going to come all the way back into Cornell's zone. 9-11 remains in the game. 41-27 advantage for Cornell, Mike. We're going to need a lot more energy in these next nine minutes out of this Owls Yeah, you're going to need a strong final push because I'm, I'm, I'm sure Temple doesn't want to play another overtime game, and if they only get one goal, and that, that is the last goal of regulation, they will have another overtime game. So I'm sure they, they would like to end this one in regulation, but they, 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 they just need that final push because they can definitely beat this Cornell team. It's not like they're playing against an extremely, extremely talented team here. Two of their last three games have reached an extra period of hockey. Could see that again tonight if Temple can even this one up. But right now they are down and Cornell is moving in transition. A shot that went just high of the net over Shelley's shoulder. Tried to keep it in. Number 21, James Check could not do that. And now McDonald forced to backpedal. Handling it behind, your man, Jack Bookbinder. And now Jack Pierce, Jack and Jack on the ice. 
Temple doing a good job of keeping it in Cornell's zone, but have to start firing the puck and sending pucks to the front of the net if they want to score here, Mike. Yeah, they're getting in the offensive zone, just not getting those high danger scoring opportunities. Brendan Ondick put on a move towards the front of the net. Two Cornell defenders were waiting for him. And now getting back on the ice, number five, Charles Giazza coming off Jason Ferguson. Ian Bowles will join him on his vacation. And now Charles to Ian. Ian put on a move to the front of the net. Falls to the ice. Ooh. Might be a delayed penalty call. Nope. Most likely not. Rough arms are down. That 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 should. I mean, I kind of don't have the best angle over here, especially with all the poles in a way, and uh, both the players' backs facing us. But that looked like that could have been something. It, it didn't look like it was anything clean. Charles say that. Charles Giazza has been out there for a majority of this period. That. Uh, sequence right there when he was on the bench was probably the most I had not seen him on the ice once this period. Yeah, it felt like it's been a few minutes, but he's back on, and I think I think now is the time Temple needs a goal because you don't want to start sort of pushing from behind the last few minutes. You kind of want to play tied with seven minutes to go. Now Charles looking to keep it in a puck that was sent high over the glove of Garrett Elmer almost had the follow-up opportunity, but Tegan Keel there to cover up. Yeah, when you start, when you're playing from behind with only a few minutes to go, that's where you give up, you know, one, you might even have an empty net, and two, that's where you give up other scoring opportunities. I think now is sort of the time to get this game even so you can have a tie game, basically a 0-0 zero -zero game with roughly seven minutes to go. Temple has won four of their last five games. Two of the past three in this building have gone to an extra frame, something to keep an eye out on as we enter here with 6.58 to go in the third. Puck is down in the Cornell zone. Now into the neutral zone. And Cornell on the chase. It's a two-on-one opportunity. Tried to center the pass to number 11, Dross Allen. Allen was not there to handle it. Hucker back out there for the Owls. Played that puck nicely on the defensive end. Yeah, Ian Bulls broke up that two-on-one rush for Cornell. He's having a good third period. He's breaking up some passes. He's, he's playing good positioning on defense this period for the Owls. Kyle Smedley, number 15, in a battle of the boards now. Two Cornell men were there, and a centering pass almost found its way. A shot to the front off the stick of Ross Allen, and now Ross Allen will play it back for Dong Yun Shin. Shin now playing it around the board, sent to the top, blocked down in front by number 84, Ian Bowles, right on time, Mike. Excuse me, Garrett Elmer. Ian Bowles knocked it down. Yaza, he had a line change on his mind instead. 5.41 to go. Oh. Fifteen. Teen. Russell was there, but Cornell was there as well. Number 93, 93. A big body out there that could come in handy here towards the end, Mike. Yeah, definitely sure. He's, he's had a couple nice plays so far, a couple underrated plays where I remember there was one play, I believe it was in the third period, where Cornell was, was threatening, but Jason Ferguson came along. As you said earlier in the broadcast, crowd favorite Jason Ferguson. Ferguson. Stick was knocked out of the hand of Cornell defender and off a of bounce. Five to three. Cornell strikes again. Well, you said in the beginning of the game you were curious on how Shelley will handle bodies in front. And that, that seemed really like the first goal where there was a real scrum in front and it found a way by Shelley. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see. I'm, I'm curious on how that got back there. It looked like a deflection from Cornell and just popped over. The, the right shoulder of Matt Shelley. Interesting goal, to say the least. Now Temple down two with 4.55 left. 4.55 remaining. 42-29 shots for Cornell. Temple has a big load now. Two-goal lead for the Big Red. They will need to start acting soon if they want to tie this up and send it to the third of the last four games to go to overtime in the York. 
Now on the back pedal is Andrew Keezer, number 12. The Owls just looking to keep it in. Cornell once again moving up in transition through the neutral zone. Caught off sides was the big red. It's not the worst thing in the world that they're down 5-3 or 4-26 left because as, as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, this isn't a league game, so this doesn't have much to do with the, with the current playoff standing for the Owls, but you would love to get a win as every single game you play you would love to get a win but it's definitely not not the end of the world and it is a solid performance putting it in the context of being coming off of an overtime game against Navy less than 24 hours ago last night the Owls as Mike mentioned did win in this building it was Brendan Ondick versus the Towson Tigers Charles Giazza last night both out there now Giazza is at least for the Owls on a second or third chance opportunity he can get a little off position so I, 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 if I'm if I'm Coach Mark Spies, just get the puck to the net. That's that's all we can do at this point because that's the only way you're going to get two goals is if you get the puck towards the net. The Owls trying to keep this home win streak alive. 124 remaining on the clock. Cornell trying to end that. A team, as we mentioned earlier, playing four and six on the road. Temple has won four of their last five. I think overall. It's it's not the worst game for Temple because you could have you could have played a lot worse, especially having an emotional game like you did last night. You could have came out and completely put a stinker, but this definitely by far wasn't their best game, especially the way they have been playing of late. And if this game ends right now at 5-3, almost not too upset because this definitely wasn't one of their best games of late. The last time the Temple Owls lost was a 15-2 road loss up in Newark, New Jersey against the Rucker Scarlet Knights. Since then, the Owls have won three straight. And now Temple has an opportunity here with 124 to go. They have their gunners out there. Charles Giazza, number five. Smedley, who's had a solid game, could not handle the puck. Wide open net. Captain Charles has to be cautious. Cornell now with an opportunity. Blocked down in front. Giazza playing the role of Matt Shelley right now. I don't think that goal would have counted anyway because I think there was a Cornell player in the offensive zone, so it would have been offsides. Brendan Onik now moving up the boards through the right wing. Garrett Elmer tried to lay the iron, avoiding the hit was number 15 for Cornell. And now Cornell moving up through the neutral zone, sent it full court and into the net, was it? And it was follow-up opportunity. The Owls' win streak is going to come to an end here with 50.7 seconds to go. That's just... Uh, that was pretty interesting. The puck comes all the way down the length of the ice, hits both posts, straddles the goal line. Cornell is able to bang it home, get a 6-3 lead. And now the Cornell Big Red will walk out of here victorious on the goal was Dylan Jones, number 15 for the Cornell Big Red. Mike, it looks like there was a lot of ice buildup in front of the line that forced it across the line. Yeah, a lot and of as, snow buildup. As you mentioned, a good follow-up opportunity. Now three goals the Owls will need in 45 seconds. Not impossible, but the task is pretty uh, marginal. Behind the net, number 19 is Max Hucker. Had himself a rough game getting pushed around. Cornell looking to extend their lead. The Owls are 7-8 and eight in this building. As I've mentioned, three straight wins in this building. That win streak is going to come to an end here. 7-9 and nine on the year. The Owls will fall in home play, and their record will be 9-20-1. 14 seconds to go. Austin Maurer out there trying to push it back in the neutral zone. Hawker slowing down. And the Cornell Big Red take the bus from the Great White North from Ithaca, New York to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and down to Sheltonham Township and walk out victorious. Final score from the Old York Ice Rink. The Cornell Big Red, six. The Temple Owls, three. That'll do it from the York here. Stay tuned, folks. I will be joined by Michael Zingroni for your post-game show. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the rink at Old York Road. I am Taylor Snyder, joined by Michael Zingroni, the Cornell Big Red, walking out of here victorious today, Mike, by a final score of 6-3. to three. 
The Owls obviously coming off that big 4-3 winner last night versus the Naval Academy. Appeared to be a little bit fatigued today. Uh, what did you see out of the team overall in a, a tough game for the Owls, obviously ending their home win streak? It, it looked like they're coming off an emotional win, and, and that's what sometimes emotional wins can do to you. A, a big league game against Navy, and you beat them in overtime. Especially a game for a lot of those 65 minutes, they were kind of chasing play. The Navy was coming at them, so they had to do a lot more skating around to chase the puck, and it was, kind of had to do the same today, and they just didn't have the legs to do it for a full 60 minutes. Ryan Trevs, number 16, was not on the ice tonight for the Owls. Charles Giaz is starting at defense, moving him up to the forward position in the third period. Uh, a smart decision, I thought, by head coach Mark Spies mm -hmm. to try to create some offense, but uh, it just seemed like they didn't really have enough gas in the tank whenever they put the puck in Cornell's zone today. Yeah, just, just not not too much there. It was less than 24 hours, too. If this was maybe a day, at, uh, two days after the Navy went, could be a different story where they just might not play their best game, but I just feel like they didn't have a lot of energy, a lot of carbs to draw off from to, to keep the energy up for a full 60 minutes, especially against a Cornell team who played 11 less games the entire season, and they're coming in and flying around from the first first drop. Matt Shelley entered today with two wins on the season. He will walk out with another loss. Number 30, though, played a really solid game in Strong. between the pipes. Up until that third period, I thought when a lot of traffic started to develop in mm -hmm. front of his net, he looked very strong. Um, what does that do for him to be able to play a game like this moving forward when, you know, our back can't do it all. We know that he can't play every single game. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think this can do for his confidence despite the loss? I think not only his confidence, I think the team's confidence, it could really go leaps and bounds. The 6-3 score is not indicative of how this game was. It just kind of piled on towards the end of the third period when Temple was really starting to show that fatigue. But I think it gives the team and the defense confidence now. Not only do you have Ben Auerbach playing at a high level, if Matt Shelley can play like that, it doesn't matter if they have Auerbach or Shelley, they can beat a lot of teams in the club hockey circuit. Temple currently sits at 15 points in the ECHA, have clinched a playoff spot, so they will be at the big dance. They sit one point above Villanova, who's coming up on the schedule. Yep. What do you think about that game moving forward? They're going to get Rutgers again here in this barn. they got to go on the road to Radnor to play Nova. What's the road looking like for the Owls, and what do you look to see out of them with two games left? This is going to be a big game for uh, positioning because a win gets you three points. Nova is only one point behind you, so the winner of this game is going to be ranked at least one spot higher than the other, so this is going to have a lot for positioning, and they could see each other in the playoffs, so we could see a playoff-like atmosphere next game when Temple plays Villanova. Drexel, of course, at the top of the standings. The Owls, as I mentioned in the broadcast, lost a tough 15-2 game versus the Rutgers Scarlet Knights on the road in Newark. They have them coming to this building to end off the home stands here for the regular season. Owls looking to close out the season when four of five games at home. Mike, I just want to get your perspective heading into the playoffs where they're at right now and where they were about two months ago, significant improvement from the team. Oh, definitely a significant improvement. I think number one is their defensive zone play. While it really wasn't on display tonight, they've done a good job of getting pucks out, not giving up second, third chance, really danger, danger opportunities from rebounds from whomever's playing in net. So the defense, I think, is really settled up. And once you play great defense, it's easy to shift in the offense, get the puck into the offensive zone, and get some shots on that. So I think they're doing a good job of playing better in front of whoever's in net and doing a good job of getting pucks in deep and pucks on net because their three goals tonight all all came from opportunities when they're in deep and working on the forecheck. I want to get your perspective real quick. You mentioned Ian Bolson. and I had a really big game. Mm -hmm. Smedley, number 15 on defense really for the Temple Owls. Yes, Very yes. sharp tonight for the Owls, and that's a good sign for them, a team mm -hmm. that really struggled defensively early on in the season, mm -hmm. starting to get their legs up under them. Yeah, starting to get depth. Sean Fowler's really coming along these last few games. Sean McDowell had a very strong game today. Smedley played really good alongside Giazza when they're defensive partners for the first two periods. So I think the depth's really starting to come in. Andrew Kayser, he's really starting to play well. He had a goal against Navy. So I think the depth is starting to come in. It's not really only Brandon Ondick, Charles Giazza, Ryan Trust. You're starting to have the whole team come up and put forward a good effort. And heading into playoff time, the team's playing its best hockey. There's no doubt about that. And it's perfect timing. As I mentioned, no Alex Barbaneri today for the Temple Owls. Austin Maurer was out there. No Ryan Trebs. There were a lot of guys that weren't mm -hmm. in and weren't out tonight. So it's kind of hard to tell uh, exactly where they're at lineup-wise. But um, preparation-wise, uh, where do you see the Owls being at uh, heading into the playoffs? Do you think, like, health-wise and the way they're playing right now, they're in one of the best positions they've been in all season? Oh, 
Definitely, because Auerbach's back. He's playing his best hockey. The team's playing his best hockey in front of them. Starting to get those death pieces coming in, as I mentioned earlier. So this is really the apex of the 2018-2019 Temple Owls ice hockey season. So the playoffs right around the corner, they are in a good spot. Of course, there's always some things you want to tie up a little bit more. This game, there's definitely some learning points you can take away from it. Yes, you had some healthy scratches, but yes, you don't want to use that as an excuse. So there are some things you can learn from this game, and I think Coach Mark Spies will try to relay, the, relay that message to his team with two games before the playoffs. Temple has shown a lot of fight in the past six games they've played. As I mentioned, a team about two months ago that really just struggled to get the puck in the back of the net, frankly. But, you know, hockey is such a beautiful game because it's really all about which team's going to get hot at the right moment. And despite losing today, I still think the Temple Owls have a lot to look up to moving forward. And a game against Villanova, a team that beat them by 10 goals the last time they were in this building. Yeah, I believe I believe uh, before yesterday's game against Navy, the last time they played Navy, they lost, I think it was like 10-1, to 11-1, to something around that nature. Then, But Temple's playing their best hockey right now. Ben Auerbach, everybody... You know, everybody's really going full steam ahead, and they have a great game with Navy, you know, top them in overtime 3-2. So it really doesn't matter what happened earlier in the season. It's what how both teams are playing right now, and Temple's playing, you can say, just as good as anyone in their league. That Rutgers game will be huge, of course, coming off the huge loss, but my focus is more so on the Villanova game. They're, oh, yeah, up, I, they're I up a point right now. Villanova. They're up a point right now, 15-14. You know Villanova had a lot to smile about the last time they played us, and Frankly, I don't think Villanova saw the best side of Temple Ice Hockey, and I sure. think they got a lot of proof heading into that game on the road. Oh, definitely a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a City Six rivalry or a Big Five rivalry if you if you want to get in some basketball sense. But, I mean, you know, th th I bet there's some players on, on Temple that want to say Villanova's not a Philly school, so they want to show them why they're not a Philly school and play some good hockey out there. Next, uh, was it, February the 8th they're playing Villanova? Yep. I believe so, February yeah, February the 8th. the 8th. So two more games remain on the schedule for the Temple Owls. Mike, I want to get your closing thought. Overall, everything from today. Any any final words on today's game? I I'm I'm, I'm really happy where Temple's standing with the goalie play because Ben Auerbach he's been playing great the last few games and Matt Shelley came out. he really impressed. I think the six three score really isn't indicative on how he played today. He played really good because that easily could have been some of the games we've seen earlier in the year where it could have been eleven one thirteen to two one of those games. But Matt Shelley he really played well. His calming presence, I mean. Gives the Temple team option. You have Ben Auerbach and Matt Shelley. If they're both playing at a high level going into the playoffs, it really puts the team in a good spot knowing that the goalie situation is fine. It doesn't matter if they play well. So they're really in a good spot as playoffs are right around the corner. Definitely impressed with the defensive play today. I mean, six goals allowed. One of those goals wasn't even Shelley's fall, uh, wide open not obviously. Mm -hmm. But it, it seemed like despite that burst at the end, Temple really kept them on a leash tonight. They would score a goal. and They don't let the game get out of hand. They would not let the game get out of hand. And earlier in the season, that was a problem for this team. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a fantastic sign heading into the playoffs. Oh, yeah. This team definitely learned as the season went on, really building from the experiences earlier in the season. And now they're putting their best product on the ice. So big matchup against Villanova in a few days. And uh, playoffs right around the corner. Exciting wasn't, times. Wasn't the best product on the ice tonight for the Temple Owls. They will have a chance to recreate that product when they play the Rutgers Scarlet Knights here next week at the York. Two more games remain on the regular season schedule. The Owls falling to the Big Red tonight by a final score of 6-3. to three. This has been Taylor Snyder joined by my partner, Michael Zingroni, signing off from the York. Have a great night.